It's time for Where You Live with Gene and Tony, the show that's all about owning, buying, selling, renting, and association management. If it involves a home, we'll talk about it. Here's your chance to get your homeowner questions answered. From the Concierge Landscape Studios, here's Gene and Tony. Need the shelter of someone's arms, and there you were. Good morning and welcome once again to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. I'm Gene Sullivan. And I'm Tony Crockett. Good morning, Gene. Good morning, Tony. And uh, Tony is broadcasting live from the Concierge Landscape Studios. I, on the other end, am broadcasting live from the Extreme Exteriors mobile broadcasting unit powered by Skype. And we are tracking a lot of just great stories uh, this week. Mm. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, in what must be the headline of the week, it states, Neighbors Pull Plug on Injured Vet's Home. What is really going on there? We're going mm. to take a look at that story. Uh, if you remember, uh, last time, uh, last week, we were uh, talking about uh, some legislation in Connecticut. Uh, one legislator is saying that he feels that there's nothing less than uh, just blatant influence peddling and uh, crooked HOA board elections running amok in that state. And uh, we didn't give enough time to that uh, topic. We want to cover that a little bit more. And uh, is it wise for an association to cut off uh, the amenities that they have serving homeowners like saunas, hot tubs, swimming pools um, from its members in order just to save money in the HOA budget? Is that uh, a right thing to do? Well, we want to hear from you as well. Tony, the number for our folks? Six five, yes, please call us at 651-289-4488 or email Gene, G-E-N-E at N-C-M-G-I dot com anytime during the show. We'll take your question. That's right. And uh, right now it is time to begin with property management in the news. Today's property management in the news, of course, is brought to you by Pest Control Services. When you need to get rid of unwanted pests in your home or rental property, you want to call someone who's responsive, professional, and a proud member of Angie's List. Give owner Greg Keener a call at 952-894-9748. That's Pest Control Services. Well, in what we talked about was uh, the headline of the week. It Mm. says, Neighbors Pull Plug on Injured Vets Home, and this is uh, an article that uh, took place this last week out of Augustana, Georgia, and it says an Evans Neighborhood Association has blocked a group that has prepared to build a home free of charge for a local veteran who was injured in Afghanistan. The home building group called Homes for Our Troops says Knob Hill, the Knob Hills Property Owners Association approved the home's design on June 2nd, but now has reversed its decision in a later meeting. A member of the association, however, says the group got only a conditional approval pending a review of its design. The neighborhood is carefully protected by building covenants, and the final design did not fit. Homes for Our Troops is a national organization and I guess has built somewhere over a 100 homes now for uh, injured uh, veterans and has planned to build a house for Army Sergeant First Class Sean Gittins and his uh, family this weekend uh, in Georgia. But uh, And I guess this is all because Gittins, uh, when he came home from Afghanistan, um, he suffered uh, concussive head injuries and... uh, Also, when he returned home, had a brain aneurysm caused by a stroke that's left him partially paralyzed. Uh, We uh, certainly uh, uh, certainly commend Homes for Troops in wanting to do something special Mm -hmm. for uh, this this Mm -hmm. brave hero. So what? But the issue is that there uh, seems to be uh, a problem in the uh, Homes for Troops. Someone and from that organization, Tony said. We've done everything that the HOA has asked for that uh, f- for us to do, uh, but uh, they're changing things at the last minute, and that's very disturbing. Someone said, "I don't think there is a community in America 
that shouldn't embrace this family after what they've sacrificed. No one deserves it more. Okay, what's the other side of the story? <laughs> well, <laughs> there always is one, isn't there? Yes, there is. Uh, you know, I, I, when I take a look at uh, this story or, or others, uh, there are things that people say that are just inflammatory, that just kind of yeah. uh, raise the whole uh, emotion of the discussion, and uh, it shouldn't even be there. For someone to say that this homeowners association um, uh, is not embracing this family, I think is far from the truth. Yeah, it is. And w what the homeowners association responded with, they said the, this group, Homes for Our Troops, did not have written approval from the association's architectural review board. They had negotiated through email only. And Tom Rogers from the Homeowners Association said, what's important to understand is the family, this family already lives here. They're a great family. We have no qualms with them. So it's not an issue of discrimination or an issue of uh, uh, not wanting this family to be in the, in the association. They just had not received final approval for their design. Yeah, and the issue seems to be that uh, the home that uh, this uh, uh, organization, Homes for Our Troops, wants to build is about 2,700 square feet. And it says that in this uh, development, it seems to be probably a very large development of single-family homes. Uh -huh. uh, the minimum is 2,700 feet. However, they have sections of homes where people have built larger homes, and the new lot where they want to build for the Gittins uh, is in an area where all the homes are 5,000 square feet uh -huh. plus. Uh -huh. And so the homeowners in the association say, hey, wait a minute, we're, we're kind of concerned. Yeah. We don't want a smaller home right by us. Yeah. I, I think this story gets down to two statements, one from each side. Homes for Our Troops spokesman said, I don't think there's a community in America that shouldn't embrace this family after what they've sacrificed. No one deserves it more. And then the quote from the Homeowners Association, these people will have to go through the same process as everyone else. I think that kind of voices <laughs> two sides of this situation. The, the Homes for Our Troops, again, is, is making what I think are inflammatory statements, emotional statements about basically saying that this veteran should get whatever he wants, whenever he wants it, regardless of how other people in the community were treated, regardless of the process for the Homeowners Association. And I don't think that's reasonable. Do you? I, I don't I don't either. One of the things that, uh, I, if I understand correctly, that happened uh, from this is that uh, from this article being written, there has been pushback in the community uh, now where there has been threats and hate mail sent to the Homeowners Association. Oh, my word. Um, and... Uh, and that was all because of this article being released. Yeah. And I guess I want to emphasize the fact that it, it looked like um, the uh, organization Homes for Our Troops was going through the right process. They were beginning to have a dialogue with the association. They were getting what's called conditional approval. Uh -huh. You want to get an idea and understanding, is this going to work? And so there is a lot of information. But uh, that just because things seem positive in all the writings up to that point doesn't mean that they were given final approval. No, and, and I, I sympathize completely with this family, and, and I am very grateful for the sacrifice they made and that you Sergeant bet. Gittins made for our country. I don't think that translates into treating them or setting them aside and treating them entirely differently than you would anyone else in that community. That community is operated by covenants and restrictions. The The association could get in trouble for making exceptions like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They could, that, that would truly be a violation of fair housing and an accusation of discrimination if they started treating one family differently than another. Oh, yeah, I agree. It would uh, be actually happening in reverse if they allowed that to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, one thing I think a lot of people living in a homeowners association needs to remember, um, and that is, uh, you know, you've got to from time to time uh, jump through some hopes to get some approval hopes or for some a hoops. design for uh, something that you're going want to change to the outside of your home. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You have to go through the process, and it sounds like homes 
for the, our troops was going through the process. They just had not completed the process. You said something when we were preparing for this, Gene, about uh, homes for our troops trying to meet a deadline, like a production deadline of some kind, and and perhaps they were having trouble meeting that deadline. Well, you know, that's one of the, I, I think that's one of the reasons why there is uh, probably this pushback uh, and the, the statements made by Homes for Our Troops, and that is they probably didn't realize the uh, timeline of what is needed in order right. to actually get something done. I think right. they were being uh, hopeful, but uh, weren't uh, weren't uh, getting it done on, in the timeline that they wanted, and right. so they were just trying to push ahead right. uh, and uh, trying to do so by uh garnering the sympathy of uh, people in the community. What really disturbs me is this kind of inflammatory talk, this kind of of over-emotionalizing the situation can really endanger people. You said threats have been made now against the Homeowners Association, and I, that is, that's bordering on criminal, I think. Oh, I, I, I do too. And, uh, you know, we've seen that from time to time, haven't we, in other articles uh, with the Homeowners Association. Uh, bottom line here, I, I don't think that this association is being mean-spirited at all. Um, as it was pointed out by the member of the board, this is a family who's already in the community, in the Homeowners Association. They want another lot, but they're going to have to go through the same process that mm-hmm. everybody else mm-hmm. is, and they don't get to cut to the front of the line. Yes, that's right. So, um you know, I uh, all in all, I think uh, what the association is doing is probably fair. But, uh, folks, tell us what you think. Do you think that this is uh, fair, or do you think that there should be something uh, special for uh, someone like uh, uh, Sergeant Gittins because of everything that he's gone yeah. through? We'd love to hear from you this morning. The Six. number six five one two eight nine four four eight eight. 651-289-4488. But uh, let's take a quick break right now, and uh, we'll take your calls when we come back. Or we'll deal with this uh, next uh, topic is influence peddling and crooked HOA board elections running amok in Connecticut. We'll find out in just a little bit.